Hey guys, I'm here today. We're going to be checking out Obi-Wan Kenobi, A Jedi's Return. This is the behind the scenes documentary about the coming together of everything that made this show happen. Uh, we've reacted to the season two making of and the finale of season two re uh, making of. So this is something I want to do. I don't know if this is going to go up on the channel or not, just because this whole week and weekend is packed with stuff. So uh, we'll we'll play that one by ear, but at least I'm going to be putting a, a watch along up for you guys on the Patreon, and uh, also you know as always, if you're a YouTube member, you get access to it as well. Um, but with that said, um, I actually still have not seen the Disney Gallery for Book of Boba Fett. I'm also kind of curious as to why this got its own kind of standalone thing and isn't classified as a Disney Gallery piece either. That was kind of uh, interesting. Kind of curious as to why that's the case, but. Guys, I'm curious to check this one out. I especially really wanted to watch this one more so than even Book of Boba Fett was uh, just because of Hayden and you and man and bringing the Vader suit to life, how how much of Hayden was involved in all that. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I, I'm definitely curious to see like all of that come together because I, I have a lot of nostalgia and a lot of uh, fondness for those two. So if I can absorb a little bit more of that, I'm definitely going to do so. So if you want to see the full length reaction to this, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, because you access as well. It's in watch along format. So just sync up your own footage with the time code to so my reaction to the entire thing. You get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel. You get to suggest and then vote on what movies we react to each month. We've got monthly Q and A's, behind the scenes footage, trying to make it worth your while since you are going out of your way to support the channel. But of course, I know never can do that. And a simple way you can help us out is just by liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing these videos, because it really does help us out a long way with help of the channel grow here on YouTube. But with that all said and down the way, guys, let's go ahead and hop into A Jedi's Return. One B, take one. Nah. This film is probably one of your first roles in a, in a strictly fantasy type film. Has presented any particular challenges to you? In of Challenge from top to bottom. <laughs> oh yeah, man. He, uh, vocally was pretty like frustrated with all of this. George Lucas um, suggested to me something of a samurai warrior, um, something of a wise mm. man. Hello there. <laughs> Come here, my little friend. I remember clearly the first time I saw Star Wars. I was five or six, and, and then I've watched it a billion times. Mm. We got a video player, we watched it over and over and over. We knew every single line of it. And then when I got cast as Obi-Wan Kenobi, I tried to watch as many films as I could of him as a young man to try and imagine him as a younger person. Mm. A character that I loved playing back in the day and I get a chance to do it again. How did he go from Revenge of the Sith with all the sort of the pain and the tragedy at the ending to sort of the calm and the peace of A New Hope? Taking on the series for me. Dude, I'd love to watch a movie on the volume. I think that would be wild. You carry on with a kid and you're sort of saying, okay, I'll do it. But you're really not up for it, but you do it anyway. You sort of take it on this obligation that you don't really want. And you're not really mm. capable of, but you promised your dying master yeah. that you would do it. So yeah. that's where it ends. We went into a stage where they were making the submarine that Liam and Ahmed Best and I end up in. And I went, George, will we go underwater in it? <laughs> no. And he went, what? And I said, will we, will we submerge in it? And he said, it's none of it real, you know. <laughs> and a little part of me went, huh. Oh. That's, that's adorable, man. I love it. Props master brought this wooden box out and opened it up and there was lightsabers in there. And I got to choose. This was an important moment to pick Obi-Wan's lightsaber. I've been waiting for this for weeks. I've been thinking, every morning I say, I wonder if it's today I'll get to choose. <laughs> it's so interesting now, 20 years later, the love that there is for those films from the generation who they were sort of made for, the children then, the films that we made are their Star Wars. I miss obviously the OG trilogy by quite a bit but like I grew up on them man I had the VHS's and I wore them out then I'm like going into my early teens and the prequel trilogy comes out I love them man I do they're not the best but my god they're so much fun to watch to this day Revenge of the Sith is still my favorite Star Wars film again 
probably definitely not objectively or subjectively even the best. Well, you can't say subjectively the best, but like, but it's my favorite. Physically, he's rusty in terms of fighting and also just rusty in terms of the desire to do it. He's sort of lost. It was his entire life, man. It's all he knew. And it was taken away. Doing crosses was not business as normal. Head down, aware that at any moment they could turn around and snap your neck. <laughs> That's such great direction. It's important for us to have heroes, yes, but also villains. It's it's cool to be it's cool to be nice. <laughs> it's also cool to see different people inhabit villains. I can't remember her name, but like Ali Alston, so barely utilized for that actress, man. I needed a young woman that you could really believe could take on Darth Vader and make an attempt on it. Never. Nope. <laughs> no one. <laughs> definitely never felt that. And that scene definitely didn't depict that. We were fortunate to have both Joel Edgerton and Bonnie return for us. <laughs> So it was kind of amazing to get both of them to come back and reprise these roles. Well, I was, I was very excited to see you, Bonnie. I was excited to see you. Good. Yeah, I really was. <laughs> no, I got a little like, oh my God, Joel's here when you came into the, yeah. the makeup trailer. I gotta say, man, this show, if anything, aside from some cool stuff with Obi-Wan and whatever, it really drove home and gave me some major massive respect to Owen and Baru, especially Owen, like he was like when you're watching the original trilogy, he's just so framed from a point of contention with Luke. And, you know, he's trying to do the best for him, but it's like we've all not all, but like it's a very common type of parental role that he kind of falls into, you know, a little abrasive, but out of a need for protection. But like. Ah, uh, man, just the extent that he puts things on the line in this. And, like, it just really hit home for me just how much Owen truly does see Luke as his own. And, honestly, like, it's it skyrocketed Owen up into some one of my favorite Star Wars characters when he was definitely far from just from some of the his acts. Like, actions speak louder than words, and his actions were loud. And nobody knew that this was the story about Obi-Wan and Leia. Debra, should I give her like a I'm sorry look before I press her off? Give her, yeah, give her a little sorry look. No. She was also such a gem. Such a surprise. She was fantastic. One of the things that really drew me to the project was the father-daughter story of it all. Because my dad, growing up, he was a very pivotal person for me. It's been really interesting because I never really thought, oh, I'm going <laughs> to go out and become like an action director. It certainly was not what I was thinking I was doing. Especially coming off of Better Call Saul, I would imagine. But like her action sequences in The Mandalorian were some of the best, for sure. He has full mouth, eye, back. Wow, look at these things, man. New one. That's pretty good. How do you see that? I like Wow. <laughs> this person would be amazing. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so maybe that's like the clothing store when they're getting the clothes. This is the, thing, the store owner that keeps watching everybody. Get your hands off of me. I thought we were friends. I gave you a ride. Because oh. it's there and you feel it. <laughs> I still can't hear Zach Braff in that performance. I sw I could have swore I thought I, that it was Seth Rogen, but no, man. That's still cool, though. When I meet Leia, I'm all business. It's just all about getting her back, and I'm not open enough uh, to see her for who she is. <laughs> in the early films that I did, there was a sort of impatience with Anakin, and at the beginning of our story, there's that frustration again. <laughs> I got forced pushed into a wall much harder than I thought I was going to. <laughs> it's just really fun to play a guy who's pretending to be a Jedi. I actually looked up a lot about different techniques that con men use to con their marks. It was really fun to do that in the context of Star Wars. 
I think. I think he did a good job, man. I do. Tala's a, an important character for Obi Wan in terms of her encouragement of him to leave the past in the past. Oh, little kid Shay is spazzing out right now. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I'm trying to keep it cool. I'm trying to like, you know, do the acting thing. Freaking out. Still can't believe this. I love this. No oh, gosh. <laughs> Star Wars is a huge, huge part of my life. Me and my sister would play the soundtrack and fight each other with our lightsabers. Me and my whole family were kind of addicted to Star Wars. And now I get to be him. We looked at his past, we looked at his relationships, and one of the most important people in his life is Anakin Skywalker. It felt really key that Hayden be playing the role. <laughs> <Hello> <laughs> How are you? You're right. Yeah, yeah. Good. You? Yeah, good. Just been watching some interesting clips of our old stuff. Oh, you know, Master, I couldn't find a speeder that I really like. <laughs> <laughs> I did those films many years ago, and still, if I go out in public, it's hard to not have some interaction with someone where they express what what these films mean to them. I remember auditioning for the films with no sort of concept that like I could actually get the part. He cast me in the role. And it was a dream come true, you know? Every day, putting that costume on, you got the cloak and the lightsaber on the belt, walking by a mirror and, and being like, you know, yeah. Up until the, you know, Attack of the Clones, the only thing I'd seen Hayden Christensen in prior was Goosebumps. He was in an old Goosebumps episode as a, when he was a kid. A big part of the thrill of coming back to this for me was the idea that I was gonna get to do it with Ewan. I was young, I was 19 when we started and, and very new to it. And he took me under his wing. We spent a lot of time together and had a lot of fun together. And action! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you warned me, you had the high ground. <laughs> Getting to come back and do more with him was an opportunity that I think we were both very grateful for. This is a character that has come to define my life in so many ways, both professionally and personally. Coming back to it after all these years was... Man, Anakin's... Anakin's rose, man. They are some, some of my favorite. My first day on set was a really special day. When I got to set, I was told that Ewan had already finished for the day and that they were trying to send him home, but he was insisting on, on staying to be there for my first shot. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. And they're like, he's standing by the camera for your eye line. And they pointed off way in the distance, two, 300 feet away. So I shouted to him, I was like, Obi-Wan. I saw a hand go up. And then I really, you know, <laughs> felt his presence. It was a very emotional thing. Well, not just reuniting as these characters, but also as friends. I love Hayden, and I, it was so nice to see him again. It was moving. It was it, it was emotional to work with him again. <laughs> it's like my brother or something. We have a sort of shorthand, I suppose. It's all still there when we were working together. It just felt very natural and easy. We found our rhythm, and it was just kind of like old hat. This is so cool, man. What I was most excited by was the idea of exploring the character of Darth Vader at this point in the timeline. I came on set to do this scene in this mining village set. She wanted to make it almost like a horror movie where the monster would appear. You turn around, he's gone. You look one way, he's gone. It's like always hunting you down. All right, here we go. Ready, and... Kind of did get that vibe. I compared it as such uh, when we were watching it. Darth Vader is coming at me. I was struck with absolute fear. It was real, like, boyhood fear. It was like... <gasps> Feeling very, like, Darth Sidious. <laughs> there is a larger-than-life component to it. Wow. At this point in the galaxy, we have a world... They used actual water. Holy shit, okay. Take, take three. Man, this show gave so much context to this scene alone that I, I just, oh, it just made episode four so much better to me now. You know, there's obviously been a lot of focus on Luke Skywalker, but I feel like with Princess Leia, I don't think he could have done it without her. Yeah, that's fair. That's right.
She was there kind of doing all the other side of it. And I think the two of them really, they did it together in a lot of ways. Played a pivotal, pivotal role in allowing everything to happen as it did. Think of your own mama, Gracie. How do you win your mom? What um, way do you respond to the most? Hugs, usually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, mother. Vivian was brilliant, just brilliant to work with. I didn't know Vivian before we started, and so the storyline and the reality of shooting are somewhat side by side in that we didn't know each other very well. So it, it went hand in hand, really. She was never anything but fully enthusiastic, and she's a passionate actor. She was a great surprise, man. I, I thought she did fantastic, man. Unless you can't do Jedi stuff, and that lightsaber is completely stolen. Make me float. <laughs> One of the things that was really interesting in bringing back a lot of the legacy characters is that they know these characters. Hayden is Anakin Skywalker, and he knows this. It's more than knowledge, it's more instinct and emotional. They just know what feels right for their characters. It's invaluable. Yeah, it is. As it was explained to me by George Lucas, even when he becomes Darth Vader, and even when he's fully immersed in the dark side, he is still the chosen one. But at this point, Obi-Wan is at his full powers again, and he is strong, and his mind is at peace finally. And he's fighting for something. <laughs> Keep forgetting the word execute for some reason. <laughs> you think that would be a word you would remember? Yeah. <laughs> I spoke to Deborah a number of months ago, and she told me that Ewan was going to do this, and he's reaching out for help, and you're not there. That's quite gone, Jim. And then he sees you. And I thought, yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> Obi-Wan has re-established a connection with Qui-Gon. And he's back to being the Obi-Wan that we knew and loved. And it's because of Leia. And it's because of characters like Tala who bring that faith back to him, who, who bring hope back to him. A new hope. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Some um, cigars left over from when my wee boy was born. Disney won't like this very much, will they? <laughs> anyway, death sticks are over here. Death sticks are over here. That was cute. It's been a great honor and a privilege to get to play this character. The gift that George Lucas gave me when, when he cast me in this role it was profound. Dang, man. That was good. Oh, we're not done yet. There's stuff throughout the credits. I would love to go to Celebration one day. You know, this, this whole experience has been uh, rather emotional for me. I couldn't help but get a little bit choked up. And she's looking really good since Drake and Josh, man. <laughs> the hello there signs with mullet Obi-Wan. Man, that was a lot of fun, man. I love stuff like this. I love watching behind the scenes documentaries and stuff like that. You know, I watched the ILM, uh, the Light and Magic, you know, six part miniseries a few months ago, a few weeks ago, rather. Um, and man, it's, it's, I don't know, man. I just love seeing the camaraderie that's developed, the ins and outs, the problem solving that goes into some these things and watching people kind of live and breathe in this world. And I think this one even more so is a lot more fun to watch because in a way it brings this catharsis to the people that loved Ewan and Hayden in these roles. You know, for better or for worse, no matter how you feel about the movies and stuff like that, you know, there was like this weight and this cloud that did kind of come over them after this point as like, should they be proud of their involvement? Like, how do they look back at that? You know, especially Hayden, man, this, him, Ahmed Best, um, Jake Lloyd, you know, so many people during the making of these things, uh, got a real rough time, man. And it's nice that we're at a point where Hayden is celebrated in his return. That makes me so happy. And I would love for even Ahmed to get, 
brought back into the fold for something major. I know he's brought in for that like uh that children's show, that Star Wars uh, kind of game show theme, where he was like a master Jedi who was uh you know uh, hosting that. But like I, I feel like you know he, he he him and him and Jake should be like next on the list for like some sort of redemption. But Hayden and Ewan are just a pairing that are just inseparable man I, I i i see them as these characters i love them as these characters and i do i love the care that goes into it for from those two specifically and that bond that they have because i feel like it really does translate onto the screen between the two of them um and the respect that they individually have for everything that's come before and the people that have kind of filled in the gaps before between here and then you know hayden even going so far as to watch all of clone wars and all of rebels to see Matt Lattner's performance and see what's been added to Anakin up until this point and carry that forward. And I mean, we're, we're not done seeing Hayden in this role too. So we're, that's exciting. We get to see that carry forward and I'm hoping for some interaction with him and then Rosario's Ahsoka at some point, one way or another. I think that could be really fun to see that reunion, but there's a lot of things going on right now that I, I really do enjoy and love seeing brought to life with all of this. And this was just a lot of fun, just seeing those two come back together and everything. Now, the, the series itself, Obi-Wan, wasn't, it wasn't perfect. Like, I, you, I enjoyed the entire ride. I acknowledged the whole way through my problems with certain things, but none of those problems ever hampered my enjoyment of the series. At its core, the things that I wanted out of it, it delivered. Um... I was enthralled in Obi-Wan's journey with it. I loved the scenes with Anakin, the flashbacks, the presence of Vader, um, and Vivian as, as I was going to say, as Carrie Fisher, which kind of is true, but as Leia was a welcome gem. And I do like Moses in this role as Reva. I really do think, despite its flaws, I think this enhanced a new hope for me. And it was a lot of fun watching the series um, and seeing some of these things that maybe didn't quite make too much sense in a new hope kind of click. And some things that maybe we didn't know we needed where it kind of enhanced some of these scenes. And like now when I'm watching a new hope and I have watched since watching the series, there's a bunch of scenes, whether it be with Luke, whether it be with Owen, whether it be with Leia, that this added context just brings, especially with the scene with Obi-Wan facing off against Vader, and then when Luke comes out and sees them, there's a lot more weight in that moment now for me when I'm watching it, thanks to this show. And uh, yeah, I hope this isn't the last we see of Ewan, though I don't know where and when or how he'd pop back up again, but I'm glad that at least we got him and Hayden back for this little reunion, this rematch, and it was a, it was fun. And this was a great little revisit and retread through the uh, through the experience. Uh, I love it, man. Guys, what'd you think of this? What was your favorite moment? What was your favorite key bits? What'd you think of Obi Wan? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We could talk about it there as well. Links to that and all my socials in the description box below. Follow me in each and every one of those. If you want to see the full-length reaction to this, remember it's on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. Same thing for all of Obi-Wan. But before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Sherritt, Ryan, Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yori, Corey Scum, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Raven McGann. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this one, guys. And may the Force be with you always. Take care, everybody.